Welcome back. As you know, we had an election in New Jersey this week. All of the assembly seats were up. There were several local elections, a few local referendums, and one special election in the New Jersey Senate. State House reporter Phil Andrews has a recap. Well, as far as the 2019 off-year elections are concerned, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Granted, the Democrats did lose a handful of seats in the assembly, but overall kept their huge majority over the state Republicans. But what happened elsewhere? Well, for starters, the big news of election night coming out of District 21, where incumbent Republican State Assembly Minority Leader John Bramnick and his running mate Assemblywoman Nancy Munoz staved off the challenge from Democrats Lisa Mandelblatt and Stacey Gunderman. N Nancy and I were challenged by, by the left and the right, which tells the state of New Jersey that you can be bipartisan, you can be reasonable, if you're fiscally conservative and you think about the taxpayers, uh, the problems that taxpayers have in the state, but you can treat people with respect. And that's been my mantra since I got in the legislature. And I tell you, we can do this. We can be reasonable. We can be bipartisan. We can be smart as long as we respect the people and the taxpayers of this state. And I want to tell you, I'm so proud of Nancy Munoz. Yeah. Yeah. This is, the be this is the beginning of a campaign. By the way, Bramnick survived becoming the first top New Jersey state legislative leader to be ousted at the ballot box since 1993. The same, however, could not be said for Democratic State Senator Bob Andrzak, who was unseated by violent resident and attorney Michael Tester Jr., who was making just his first run for office. The first district also saw the Republicans picking up general assembly seats, as voters rejected Democratic incumbents handpicked by Democratic U.S. Representative Jeff Van Drew to continue his legacy. Republican Assembly candidates Eric Simonson and Antoine McClellan ousting incumbent Assemblyman Bruce Land and Matt Meelum. And as expected, Anthony Bucco Jr., who remained on the ballot even after taking over his father's Senate seat in District 25. He won the Assembly seat, which he has already relinquished. Republican committee members in that district will choose Bucco's successor. As far as the state ballot question was concerned, New Jerseyans voted unanimously on whether New Jersey should extend property tax deductions to military veterans who live in continuing care retirement communities. Prior to that vote, only veterans who lived in their own home were eligible for the $250 annual deduction on their property taxes. And finally, just a quick recap from the top of the story. The Democrats, yes, they did lose a handful of seats in the Assembly, but for the most part, continue to maintain a huge majority over New Jersey state Republicans. For example, prior to the election, Democrats held 54 of the 80 possible seats. After the election, their advantage diminished to a 50 to 30 margin, but again, still a majority Democratic rule. And so with this off-year election now behind them, New Jersey voters can set their sights on next year's election, 2020, because when New Jersey voters go to the booth next year, they'll have a chance to vote on who will be the next person to take over the Oval Office in the ensuing four years. In Trenton, for Jersey Matters, I'm Phil Andrews. All right, thank you, Phil. When we come back, the fight to prevent suicides is personal for a former Miss Teen New Jersey. You'll meet her when Jersey Matters continues.